Hi folks, well as you can see the bike is back from the dealers already uh, that was quick um, unfortunately the reason that it's back so soon is because the dealers hasn't done anything on it at all and the reason for that is that they said uh, that they didn't want to get involved with it uh, or something to that effect um, reading between the lines I think what they were saying is they wouldn't touch you with a barge pole and I think the reason is from a liability point of view obviously because the bikes are very kind of DIY um, if it kind of if I have a major problem with it a few months down the line and uh, potentially then I could if they've worked on it if they've got it running then I could kind of take it back and complain or, or whatever so um, obviously although that's kind of not ideal I can understand um, that you know that they're a business and that they need to sort of cover themselves so that's fair enough um, but obviously that means that I've got to get it running again so I found out I think it was Thursday um, it was picked up on Wednesday and I found out on Thursday this week um, that they weren't they weren't going to be able to do anything with it. And then I got it back Friday, and then I brought it in today. I've not really done any work on it yet. Um, but basically, I've been kind of using my powers of deduction and figured out what I think is the problem, what I'm reasonably sure is the problem. Um, basically, most things most components of the ignition uh, um, have been kind of what's the word ticked off the list have been kind of eliminated as being the problem um, at this stage so you've got the spark plugs the spark plugs are brand new I think it's unlikely to be them um, the coils and the leads have been tested actually by the same bike dealer incidentally um, when I took them in separately and they did a test on them and said that they were working um, so that eliminates those two. The CDI, well, the CDI was second hand, but I messaged the guy that I bought it from on eBay, and he says it come from, it came from a working bike. Now, obviously, I've only got his word for it, but the thing is, I bought the CDI several months ago, so I think, you know, I couldn't really get a refund from him or anything at this stage. So I think it's unlikely that he would, you know, say that kind of there's no reason for him to say that I suppose is what I'm getting at so I, I think probably the CDI is okay um, now so that just leaves a few things well one of the things is my wiring well okay maybe my wiring could be suspect but there again everything else that I've wired in as you've seen on previous videos the lights the indicators the brake lights the radiator fan the starter motor and so on it all works so and it pretty much all worked first time, well, ish. Most of it kind of worked first time when I wired it up. So I don't think there's any reason to think that it's kind of my wiring necessarily that's the problem. So that leaves um, just basically two things. One thing is the kill switch on the right hand handlebar. Um, that possibly might not be working, but the thing is the starter button does work and that's part of the same module so it's possible it might be not working but it's maybe not likely I can relatively easily test that anyway I can kind of bypass the switch and just basically um, you know just bypass the uh, the kill switch and just run a wire straight from from one side of it to the other kind of thing um, to test that so what does that leave? That leaves literally one ignition component. Now, that component is uh, what a lot of people call a pulse generator. Um, if it was on a car, it would be what's known as a CPS, the crank position sensor. And essentially, what it is is a little magnetic, it's a little magnet basically that kind of reads um, teeth on a on a sort of cogwheel thing. Uh, on the end, on one end of the crankshaft, not on that end, but on the opposite end. And what it does is it basically sends little pulses of electricity to the CDI, 
and tells the CDI what the position of the crank is and the CDI uses that information to um, fire the spark plugs via the coils okay <coughs> excuse me um, so from looking on um, Google it seems that pulse generators can can sometimes cause the problem and also speaking to one or two people it seems that um, pulse generators or crank position sensors can kind of completely stop an engine dead because obviously if, if there's nothing coming from the pulse generator when the engine turns over then you're not going to get any spark at all now what I've also realized is it would also stop the fuel because um, the fuel pump is electric and the fuel pump is controlled by the fuel cutoff relay the fuel cutoff relay is controlled by the CDI and the CDI is controlled by the pulse generator okay so if your pulse generator is not working not only is your ignition not going to work but the fuel cutoff relay is not going to operate which means that the pump is not going to operate so you're not going to get any fuel to the carburetors so that would explain why there didn't seem to be any petrol in any of the pipes or the filter or anything like that because there wasn't any petrol there <laughs> because the pump wasn't pumping so basically the pulse generator being faulty would kind of explain the whole thing so what I've done is I've ordered a pulse generator on eBay um, it's about 35 quid plus postage I think it, with postage it's something like 37, 38 pounds something like that which is another chunk of money but you know <coughs> excuse me I spent like probably the best part of three grand building a bike but you know so if I spent that kind of money obviously I'll, I'm quite prepared to spend another 40 to actually get it running you know so um so that's pretty much it so the pulse generator should be here sometime through next week I think on eBay it says that the uh, the expected delivery date is like the I think it's the 13th or something or um, somewhere around about there so it's a re relatively straightforward job to fit that so what I'll do is I'll probably fit that in an evening after work and then what I'll do is I'll take the bike out and test it next weekend and see if it runs so um, just so you kind of have some idea what I'm talking about, I'll show you. So down here you've got <coughs> you've got one engine case on the other side, you've got two engine cases on this side, okay. So you've got the there's a clutch cover on this cover here. This is um like the the cover on the end of the crankcase. Now obviously you can't see the whole of it very well because of the, the hose pipe and that, but because of the radiator hose, but um I think in a second you've got the wire that that's where is it there right you're probably not going to be able to see that in the video because it's too dark but there's basically there's a wire comes out there through a kind of grommet thing through one of those kind of semicircular grommets where you get a wire going into something in an engine so um, basically the pulse generator is in there and the the little cog that drives it is in there so what I'm going to need to do when the pulse generator comes is just take this cover off which is like one two three four five six seven about eight bolts take that off and then obviously replace the pulse generator um, and just plug it wire it in at that end it's just a couple of plugs just a couple of spade connectors at the other end so it's pretty straightforward um, hopefully I should might be able to reuse the same gasket because that's a new gasket that was put in only a few weeks ago or maybe a couple of months ago and it was put in with grease so and the engine's not been run so I think I can probably reuse that if not then I'll just have to make another gasket I've got some gasket rubber so I'll just make one up if necessary um, and hopefully that will get the engine going and if it doesn't well I don't know but as always if anyone's got any kind of advice with regard to this if anyone's got any ideas as to what the problem might be as whether you know or as to whether that's likely to be the problem or not as the case may be um i certainly appreciate your input um if you want to put some comments below the video with any you know advice suggestions whatever um, that's very much appreciated. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, 
So what else can I talk about with the project? Um, I'm actually thinking I've got a bit of time now. There's not a lot I can do on it at the moment until the pulse generator comes. I could do more kind of troubleshooting, but well, I'm just going to try and fit that, I think, and hopefully that'll fix it. And if not, I'll take it from there. So I'm thinking about doing a bit of painting work on it now. I need to tidy it up a bit, sandpaper these side bits because I've got kind of like fiberglass all over the place. So tidy it up with a bit of sandpaper and just get a bit of paint on there and get it freshened up a bit. Um, I've also taken the bar end mirrors off because they weren't really very secure. They kind of like flop backwards and forwards. So I've got rid of them. Decided I don't like bar end mirrors. I've never really had any luck with them. I can never get them really solid. Now they don't go in at all, or if they, when you eventually get them to go in, then they're not very, not very secure. So, um, so what I've done is I've ordered some bar ends, just like some normal kind of bar weights to go in at the end of the bars. I think they're like 32 mil on the outside and. 13 or 14 mil on the inside, something like that, with the usual rubber thing, and you just hammer it in and tighten it up. So I put those on, and then um, I've ordered some mirrors as well, because obviously I'm going to need mirrors to pass the MOT. I'm pretty sure you have to have mirrors on the bike to pass the MOT. If it doesn't have them, it won't pass. Um, but luckily, these levers that I bought, they've got um, these things for attaching mirrors like a, a threaded thing which is 10 mil takes like a 10 mil bolt so I can bolt my mirrors on there and I'll have like these sort of more traditional mirrors like that um, the kind of carbon look mirrors that I bought they're about 750 on eBay or something um, there's a mounting on this side as well there which is kind of close to the reservoir so I'm hoping that that'll fit but if it doesn't I'll just have to and I just have to reposition that somehow or something, I don't know. I'll get it to go together somehow. So then I'll have mirrors for my MOT. Um, that's pretty much it for the moment, really. So hopefully next time you see it, it might be a slightly different colour. Namely, black. Um, and hopefully, sometime within about a week... Uh, and I've said this every week for the last probably three months. Hopefully, you should see it running next week. So, if people would like to cross their fingers, that would be wonderful. But thanks very much for watching anyway. Alright, speak to you later. Bye then.